is Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to take a look at some brand new paints that I just bought. Uh, the Core Watercolor Set by Golden. And they're supposed to be really um, fantastic. They use a different binder other than gum arabic, which most traditional watercolors, actually I think all traditional watercolors have in them. So it's a different binder and it's supposed to make the paint like super, super brilliant. Um, so I bought one of the introductory sets. I got the High Chroma set. It was on sale for 24 bucks um, at Jerry's Artorama. And um, I wanted to do that because individually the paints start at like $11 a tube. So this is obviously more economical. So here inside, you've got this cool tin. I actually really like the tin. Um, my friend Marty over at Owens Art also reviewed these and he wasn't so keen on the tin. I like it. Um, and it's got some like dimples in there for mixing your paint. So this is the size of the tube. These are five milliliters, so they're tiny, but it is watercolor, so it goes a long way. And there's also this cardboard insert that I'm going to be tossing very shortly. Um, so without further ado, I think we'll do a painting tutorial. I'm going to show you how to paint some daisies that were by request, and um, and we'll paint them together. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go to the table and do some painting. Okay, I have put my um, my paints onto my palette, and I did notice that on the turquoise and a little bit on the um, green gold there that the binder was separated a little bit from the uh, from the pigment, and that that happens sometimes when paints have sat. These are pretty new paint though, so I'm kind of surprised that that um, that that was the case. But it really shouldn't affect too much as long as I mix it up uh, when I use it. So I have it out there, and this is obviously more than I would need to do a painting, so I'd want to let it dry in here and then probably keep like close the tin upside down and just leave it like that until I use that up and then come up with a permanent solution, such as a little pillbox or something inside my tin. Um, and if I do end up getting more colors, I'd probably keep them all in the same tin and maybe just do like a, a pillbox for every six colors or something like that. Um, but we'll, we'll decide today whether I'm going to buy any more. We'll see how, we'll see how it works. Um, I am going to sketch on a... Um, uh, just a little drawing here. This was submitted by a viewer, Linda, who um, wanted these Gerber daisies. So I'm just going to draw, there was a three like really close up and I'm just kind of basically going to throw in a sketch here. I like to spread my, I like to space the petals out and then fill in so that I get them nicely balanced. She said they're Gerber daisies. I'm not sure if they they don't seem as full as the Gerber daisies that I have, but that I've that I've gotten on occasion. But I think that one come a little bit further, maybe. I'm not going to get too fussy with it because I know you guys really want to see how those uh those paints perform. And there's some nice shadows in this piece, so I thought it'd be really good a uh, good subject for this. So I'm just throwing it in. So of course there will be some pigment on here that is from. The, um, the pencils that I'm using, but it's not going to be a lot, so uh, so I don't think it's going to affect it too much. All right, so what I have here, my paints, I'm going to bring some of them out. I'm going to liquefy some of them out so we can see kind of how they look. So there's the purple. It's nice and, oh, let me bring that over a little bit. Nice and vivid. Why don't I use it on this card too and just kind of swatch it out? So that's the um, dioxazine purple. Here we have quinacridone magenta. I learned how to say that word. I'm so proud of myself. Nice and vivid. It really looks um, a lot more like a, like an India ink or a liquid watercolor than a traditional watercolor. Let's see. This is the transparent pyrrole orange. Oh, that's lovely. It does. They do. Um, they're not very granular. They mix pretty quickly. I'm working on hot press watercolor paper here, but when I do the painting, it will be cold press. Now let's just kind of get that combined a little bit that uh, this is cobalt teal. Um, so I think the reason that these paints were affordable in this set is because they are a fairly new company. Well, a fairly new line for this company. Golden is well known for their acrylics. And a lot of times, and this is when you get your real bargains on art supplies, um, when a company comes out with a new line, that's usually when they release it for like introductory prices. So if you're if you're willing to take a gamble, you can get some awesome deals. That's how I got my um, M Grams. That's how I got my um, Da Vinci's. I mean, everything is like doubled or tripled in price since I bought it because I'm willing to take a gamble when a company comes out with a new artist line of paints. So there we get the colors there. I can blend some of them together. We'll see how they go. Let's do the magenta and orange. 
and we can do the orange to the to the um, gold and the gold to the green. They flow really well. I think it's because they're not very granular. And this is the high chroma set, so you know a more minerally set might flow less. I love those colors. Those are really nice. Do the purple to the teal. It's like a happy circle of color. There we go. All right, so we got a little demo there. I think that's pretty. Boy, that would be a pretty. Proud. You know what? Let's do this, and we might be able to recycle this for a card background later. Let's pull some of the colors into the middle. It'll make a little bit of a grayness, but. I think that'll be a cool background. And we could just kind of pull some of this out and we'll see. Just watch it flow. All right, so really awesome flow on that. That's cool. All right, so now we're gonna do our painting now. for the, So I wanna put my darks in first. I wanna put my dark backgrounds in. So I'm gonna see if I can get a really good dark from these. I'm gonna start, let's see, I wanna see what I can find that would be really opposite. So I'm thinking this um, yellowy green and the purple might make a really nice dark gray. So let's try that. Let's do that purple because that's my strongest color as well. So I think that would be a good good place to start. And we'll do this um, this green gold. Okay, well, let's see what we get. If we get a brown or a gray. Oh wow, that's really dark. That's looking good. Okay, and I'm just trying to see what my the brown is a little orangey based. Looks kind of orangey based, orangey green. I'm gonna add a little magenta to that and see what that does. See if the magenta will counteract any leftover green. All right, it's still pretty rusty. We can add a little bit of that blue in there. We'll see what that does too. The aqua doesn't appear to be, well, it's, it's cobalt teal. It doesn't appear to be that strong, so we'll just add it in there and see. I'm still seeing a lot of heavy yellow undertones, so I'm gonna put some more purple in there. And I'm going to use all of these colors in the, my painting. So um, there, now we get a nice, pretty close to black brown color there. So that's what I like to do. I like to get my background colors in um, and mix them together to make my dark. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to wet the background. I'm not going to paint that all in as a flat color. I'm going to put some of that in, but I'm going to add some of the other colors to it. Dissolving any of my lines. I'm actually kind of dissolving the flower lines because I really... Um, I don't want to have any harsh lines there. I have no idea how long this tutorial is going to be, so if it is going a little long for you, feel free to um, go to that little gear at the bottom of the video player, and that's the settings gear, and you can choose to speed it up, like, um, by, like, I don't know, half a stop, or one and a half stops, or two stops, so that, so that it can be a little faster for you if this is going too slow for your liking. Okay, so I've got my background, and I'm going to drop in, I'll drop in that nice dark that we mixed. Wow, that, that really flows great. I love really flowy colors. I know, like, a lot of student grade paints don't flow with that, that well. I think it's because a lot of the fillers that they use. Now, keep in mind, these are artist paints. These aren't really for kids because, like, this has, the cobalt teal contains cobalt. You know, you don't really want your kids um, exposed to that. Oh, that is almost like neon, that uh, green gold, isn't it? Add some of that. All right. Um, you know, so it's obviously not like a really, not primary colors here, but I think you could do quite a bit in the mixing and um, get some really nice colors. I would probably just use it with my other paints I already have. I'm not, I'm still undecided whether I'm going to invest in any more, but if I'm going to, I would get the introductory sets because... Um, they're quite a bit cheaper. I think they have three sets of six and one set of twelves, and I'm not sure if there are duplicates between the sets. I don't think there are duplicates between the sets of six, but don't hold me to that because I really haven't investigated that much. I just thought that um, it'd be fun to try, and usually the quinacridone colors tend to be the more pricey ones. Also, colors that have cobalt in them tend to be more expensive, so that's one of the reasons I went with this intro set because I know that if I really liked it and I wanted to get some open stock, these would be the ones that would be expensive, so I'd rather get those on the deal. All right, <clears throat> so I also want to add in some of these other colors that I've mixed from, so they can kind of, oops, I didn't mix that out very well. Make sure you rinse your brush really good before you go back into a color if you have it on a palette like this, because you don't want to um, contaminate your colors. Even though, you know, you got the if you got the intro set, you got a pretty good deal on them, you're still, they're going to be expensive to replace each tube, because they are, you know, an artist quality paint. All right, I want some of that magenta in there on its own. Let's see. 
This is just fun just to do this with, actually. Oh, and I want to show you something. I know I get a lot of questions about what's the difference between hot press and cold press paper and rough paper. Well, if you think about it as an iron, like if you want to, if you want to iron a shirt, you use a hot iron so you can press out all the wrinkles. So hot press is like hot rollers. The the paper's gone through hot rollers, and so it's smooth. So this paper's very smooth. My paint wants to flow um, really well on it, and I'll get like some backwash and some blooms. Now cold press. That paper has not been passed through hot rollers. That's why it's also called not, meaning not pressed, not hot pressed, which is kind of silly, but that's what it means. And rough is just a really rough, not pressed at all paper. So that's when like really awesome for landscapes and stuff like that, where you really want that texture. So just a few things to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead and do the middles of these flowers because they're not touching the outside petals. Because if I do the petals now, it's all going to whoosh, just blend together a little too much and I'm going to I'm going to try this color here this is my um quinacridone gold I'm going to use that here around the edges oh I like this it almost reminds me of markers using markers because the colors are really pure um and I have not looked at the light fast tests on this or not, uh, but golden products are usually pretty good. I guess I'll have to get back to you or you could do some research on your own about that. And let's see, I'm gonna do some of this uh, green gold in the middle. Let them do its thing. Let them, let them just flow. Oh, this is fun. I like this. Hope you guys all had a good weekend. I took my kids to the, well, we had Girl Scout Thinking Day on Saturday. And then I took the kids to the bounce house yesterday. I'm not a big fan of the bounce house, I have to say. It's, uh, it's loud and full of children. <laughs> uh, it was just, it was busy. It was a busy day there. And then, but then it like completely died off. People, I guess, went home to have dinner and the kids had like the run of the place. And so they had a good time. I brought a book. It was, a, uh, it was fun. Everyone had a good time, but, uh, yeah, not something, not a, not a regular on my on my things to do. All right, what I'm gonna do, I think, is let it dry, and then we're gonna see how it lifts, and we're gonna paint our flowers in, but I wanna let this part dry first. Now, um, some, now, here's a little tip. If you are painting, and like I showed you here, right here, see these little roughly edges? That's what happens when you've got like a puddle of paint, and it one part dries quicker than the other, and you get these little ruffles. They're called blooms, and they can work, They you could, sometimes you work excellently with your composition and sometimes you're not what you want. So if you don't want that, my best way to deal with this without disturbing any of the paint is to dry your brush off and then just set it in there and the brush will drink up that paint, okay? So if I don't want to bloom, I'll just set my dry brush or thirsty brush in there, I'll wipe it off, I'll keep doing it until I've soaked up the puddle. So you can do that. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. I had a little burp, excuse me. How very unladylike. <laughs> I should have reshot that. Time for a voiceover. Now we're all friends. We're all friends. We can deal with a little burp, can't we? All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and we'll see how this shifts. You'll be able to see really well because I'm gonna pause it so you'll be able to see when you when it pops right back on how much shift we got as it dried. So we'll catch you in a minute, okay? Okay, I'm back and my uh, watercolor has dried and you can see that, yes, it is a little duller now. It shifted um, to be more dull and matte, but I wanted to show you the texture. I think the texture is really cool. Um, how it dried, there wasn't any puddles of bloom, but you still get this kind of interesting um, interesting edges in here, which is just kind of cool, I think. And it's almost like the pigments resisted each other where I didn't mix them up. Like we've got the really dark, so I mixed up, but then it's almost like like the cobalt teal and the magenta and the gold kind of kind of resisted each other and pushed each other away, which I think was really, really kind of cool. All right, so now what I want to do is kind of <laughs> fix my petals because they are really rough where the paint um, where the paint kind of got in there. So what I have here is a short synthetic bristled brush. So it's you could also use a um, a hog brush. Uh, but you want to make sure, because I, I like this one because it is um, not going to be too abrasive on my paper. It is a Lowell Cornell uh, number 270 Maxine's Mop, quarter inch in size. Um, and the bristles are kind of, they're short and they're, they're a little more stiff than your watercolor bristles. Um, 
and I don't know if they're blended with some hog bristle, but they're 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 stiffer than a regular watercolor brush, but I don't think they're going to be abrasive. So what I'm doing is kind of rounding out my petals. It's lifting, so I'm curious. So I was really really curious um, how how it would lift up the paper. I feel out of sorts. It's I paused this video probably. Well, I I, I stopped it about an hour ago probably. I wanted to um, let's dry naturally because sometimes when you use a hair dryer to dry it, it will get a little, um, you'll kind of blow the paint around a little bit and it will make it move artificially and I wanted to know exactly what it's going to do just on its own. And I'm also curious as to how staining these colors would be. I think the uh, <clears throat> the purple is very staining but that's not a surprise because it usually is. I think I'll add a few other petals in here. So why don't I add one like right here. Let's see how I can lift it back completely. Let me turn this around a little bit here. I'm rinsing my brush off between because I don't want to be um, adding dirty color. And I'm just lifting. You always want to blot when you do go to lift up the color, wipe it away. You never want to, um, oops, you never want to rub your paper with your towel, okay? Just blot straight up and down. We are rubbing the paper with this brush, but it's going to, uh, it's a lot gentler than trying to rub it with a towel, and you don't, you're not going to have the control with the towel. And this will also soften my edges. I felt like my edges were a little, a little harsh. This is probably a very exciting video, huh? <laughs> you know, but you know, the first time I'm using a product, I don't really know how it's going to behave. I don't know how I'm going to want to, um, how I'm going to treat it, how I'm, you know, what's going to come of it. So you're kind of getting a little bit of a um, sneak peek into the experimentation part of my day. Usually the stuff that I don't show on a video is usually the stuff I kind of work out beforehand. The gold seems to lift up really well. Uh, but you can also see how I'm softening those edges. I want to add another petal in here. And I'm not worried that I can't lift back to white because um, it's actually going to give me a much more natural look when I go in there and I paint the petals on top. And I might need to get a dry towel before I'm done here. I'm not going to worry about it too much. <clears throat> I'm liking these these uh, these paints all right, I think. I feel like I need to clear my throat. I just had lunch. Did I tell you that? Yeah, very healthy lunch. I took a bunch of... Uh, I made a wrap. It was a whole wheat wrap, and I did put a salad in it, but I also put like a load of uh, sweet and spicy Doritos, which are vegan, surprisingly. The regular Doritos aren't. They have milk in them, but the uh, sweet and spicy ones are are vegan. I could have probably, I probably live a very healthy, a much, much healthier lifestyle if I didn't know that fact. <clears throat> I do like them way too much. I get my own stash. I buy decoy chips because <laughs> the kids, the kids can like tell. If there's potato chips in the house, they can tell. So I buy decoy chips for them, and then I hide the Doritos. <laughs> And then I'll, or sometimes I'll buy the milky Doritos for them. I'll buy like you know regular Doritos or Cool Ranch or whatever for them, and I'll and I'll hide my sweet and spicy ones. It's awful. It's awful the things us mothers do sometimes, isn't it? I'll soften that out. And just to a few of the edges over here. This one is more the for the focus flower, so I don't need to uh, soften everything over here. Just. Any place where I have a weird edge because I, you know, <clears throat> I kind of paint fast, painted my background in kind of quickly. I need to, you know, fix a petal or whatever. There we go. Maybe just touch this guy up here. It's a little odd. But if you have any, like, um, Short bristle brush like this, it will uh, it'll work great for this. Just you know, keep it in your. It could even be like an acrylic brush or something you have for another another use. Go ahead and use it for this purpose. I don't like my edges too hard. All right, now it's time to start painting, and we'll probably go back to our round brush. I feel like I'm moving just in slow motion today. Do you ever get the, that feeling? All right, I'm going to grab some of the magenta. <clears throat> ah, yes, I'm froggy. feel froggy. Apologize for that. All right, and I'm going to add some of that color in the middle of our petals towards the bottom. 
just going to do a few of them at a time. Actually, I'd probably do all of them at a time. <coughs> Sorry about that. Oh my gosh, I just feel like I have a frog in my throat. There we go. We're all friends here. All right, now I'm going to grab a little bit of the violet. It's it's um almost dried up in my palette too. So that's kind of nice. I'll be able to shut the lid on that. I'm just, I'm just dropping it in there. Gonna let it do its thing. And I'm also gonna kind of define the edges of the center of my flower. And I kind of wanna, um, because it's textured, it's very textured center, I'm kind of just poking it with the um, tip of my brush to kind of get it to get to get look kind of textured. I'm gonna turn it around here. There we go, I like what it's doing. I like that we've been able to work in all these high chroma colors. I think I used everything. I don't know if I don't think I used the orange. I don't think on this picture, but I think I used everything else. Don't be shy about turning your picture around as you go. That's why I like to tape it to like a piece of cardboard or something. A piece of foam core because I can uh, I can pick it up and move it when I need to. It's not stuck to the table. Okay, now I think maybe I'll just do a really light wash of the magenta towards the edge. And I think I might switch to a flat brush. And I think maybe I'll just pick up a little bit in the corner, on the corner of my brush. We'll see how that works. I don't know. If I have some wet edges, it might, it might want to give me trouble, but we'll see. Ooh, that's pretty. I could see this, uh... This paint having some decorative painting um, fans, you know, especially when a lot of decorative painters use acrylics already, they may be familiar with golden and that might be a nice natural transition, but it certainly, it wants to uh, blend really well with the side loading. Just go for a subtle look. Oh, it's kind of nice. It's a little stark there. All right, I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna go around and keep doing that technique. Turn your paper as you need to. Hopefully, I have the anti-shake turned off. Otherwise, you're gonna it's gonna look like you're riding a roller coaster when I do every time I move anything. Hopefully, I don't have the anti-shake on. You can also do it in two strokes. See, and then like anywhere where we soften, soften an edge, it's just helping define it, but it's not so stark. I like the, I really like the tins. I know um, my friend Marty over at Owens Art thought they were a little, a little much. I mean, like wasting his face and stuff. And uh, a lot of, a lot of the people watching his video have had the same opinion. But I had to say that I really like the tins. So, you know, and it's, they're pretty much free when you figure how expensive the paint is. And you're getting the paint at such a deal. At least I think. I mean, then again, I'm, I'm used to... I'm used to buying artist quality paint, so I'm used to the price. It does not, it's not shocking anymore. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go in with my magenta on all these petals. I honestly think I can go ahead and do these too. You could easily uh, do a large painting of this. And I think that it would be um, would be really pretty. You could get really free and expressive. I think this would be a perfect. You know what? That is actually part of that that flower. Look at that! I made a snake. <laughs> Wonders never cease. Hard to believe. Hard to believe. That's all right. We'll fix that. Oh, look! All of a sudden, we've got more petals over there. How do you like that? Got a little more purple to it. Yeah, we'll just work it in. Not a big deal. Anybody still watching? <laughs> this video is really not going to do any uh, any favors for my audience retention score. <laughs> Everybody left at about 20 minutes in. Okay, I know you guys are the diehards though. If you guys are, if you're still watching, you're like super fan. You're like diehard painting fan. All right, and again, we're gonna do the little. 
little pokey into the center here. There we go. I think I'll need more magenta on there, but I can add that in in a minute. Now see, if I don't move my paper, I have to kind of twist around like this and it's not as comfortable. So keep that in mind. All right, now we'll do the side loading with more magenta. My water, I will tell you <clears throat> that my water bu bucket's a lot dirtier than it usually is at this stage in the game. So there's definitely a uh, high pigment load in these paints. Um, I think whatever they're using for the binder, maybe it says on here, binder, I don't, I'll, Aqu Aquazol, Aquazol is like a registered trademark. That must be the binder. Uh, it must be their, their unique binder. Um, but I'm thinking that maybe it's like thinner than gum, than gum Arabic, so maybe that's why it's got such a, maybe that's why it, flo uh, it flows so well. It's hard to keep your brush clean when side loading when you've got so much of the, um, that bright purple in there. I'm getting the other side of my brush in the bright purple, so that's why I just rinsed it off just to keep it fresh. So I think these are a great buy. I, I love it like the, when they come out with new paints and they offer them at a discount. So if you've been looking to make that leap to an artist paint, I don't think this is a bad choice. You know, I think it's a good idea because they're not going to stay that cheap for long. It'll be up to, you know, the only way you'll be able to get it will be, you know, 11 or 20 bucks a, a pop. And hey, if you can get it for six for 24, then that's way better. And I'm not sponsored by them. I have no relationship with Golden Paints. This is just, I was curious, so I had, a, had to order some stuff for a class and I'm teaching coming up. So I just decided to throw these in my cart as well. Now I'm feeling that they, these two petals look a little strange. So I'm gonna scrub them, scrub this one out a little bit. There. Maybe add, add one in there. So, that, you know, a lot of people think that once you do a watercolor, once you're painting it, it's you can't change it. But that's very untrue. You can always, you can always change it. You just got to know how. I got a little more of that purple in there. Let's deepen up this one. It will let it recede a little bit more if it's darker in color. I just put a little of that purple on the corner of my brush. Why don't we do that over here, too? We'll use that same technique. See, we can get in there. And you'll, you'll find that you prefer some brushes over other ones. Try all the techniques you can, though. And figure out what's, what's your style. You even make up your own techniques, and that's completely fine and great. Okay, need a little more of the magenta around the edges. And you can see I have a lot of paint left over that I'll be able to use on other things, on other projects, so I'll keep my... I'll keep it right there in the palette. I won't wash it off. All right, now let me see if I have my, I should have my credit card scraper tool right around here in the bottom of one of these bins. It's so weird being upstairs instead of downstairs, having all my odds and ends in the places. You know what, I'm gonna pause it and see if I can find my little credit card scraper. Found it as soon as I paused the video. All right, so we can scrape some lines some veins into the wet flowers. I missed the boat on that one, that's all right. We'll go in and add some more to that. Let's try to follow the contours of the, uh, the flowers. And I thought it might be kind of cool I've got a couple sponges and I think I might cut off a little piece here. Let me wet it so it will cut easier. This is another little technique that I like. So what I'm going to do, I just wet it because otherwise it's too stiff to cut. I'm just going to cut or maybe just start a cut and then just tear off a piece of sponge so I have this kind of like rough area and I'm going to take some of that gold and I'm going to take some of that gray that we mixed and maybe a little bit of the magenta. And I'm just gonna tap it onto my centers to get a little texture, because these are textured. I 
And then I can do a little bit of that with some of the green. Well, maybe I'll lift that edge a little bit. I want to make sure it's not too predictable. I, I want it to be random. I already like the texture that's in there, so I'm not going to mess with that. But if I had like burnt sienna right here, I would definitely use that because that would be that would be a really great color to use. But I'm just I just I wanted to keep it just to this these paints that I had in this line because I wanted it to be a fair review and I wanted to you know see what I could do with just that one set. And it's the high chroma set again because I'm a high chroma type of girl. There, so we have a little texture in the centers now. And if that's too much, I can go on the clean side of the sponge and I can lift some of that out. You know, so yeah, it's just and it's just a, a sponge from the grocery store, just a cello cellulose sponge. All right, so I want to do I think I might just leave those other two flowers, maybe just add a little bit more color towards the center of this one. But I think I want to add more detail to that one because it's kind of the one in front of everything and I just feel like it needs a little bit more attention. So what I think I'm going to do is go into some magenta and just kind of maybe wet my brush a little bit more. I want to be able to get like a fluid stroke in the center of each of these petals because like the color is really concentrated to the center. So this is kind of like a decorative painting technique. It's kind of like a comma, comma stroke. So I really want to get that in there. And then maybe if it's wet enough, I can, I don't know if it will be or not. I might be able to scribe some, uh, some veining lines in here, but even if not, like the, when I pull the brush up and I get that little bit of dry brush there, that, um, that's going to give me a little bit of texture on the flowers too. I'm going to add a little bit more of the, uh, violet, and this is, since I didn't really have a very well thought out plan of this, I hope this painting is um, at least somewhat instructive because, you know, a lot of times I, I think it out, it doesn't seem like it, but I do have like more of a, I'm using materials that I'm more familiar with, so I have a more cohesive tutorial, but uh, there. Okay, I am going to scrape. Scrape my lines in here. I'd love to know what you think of these paints. If you've tried them, let me know. Um, you can also let me know what you think of it, you know, the demonstration of this tutorial. You know, I think if you have artist, color, art, artist quality paints already, you may not feel the need for these. Um, and you probably wouldn't have the need for these, but if you are, you know, if you're curious and you get a little money to, to spend, oh, why not? It's, they're fun. Alright, well I think I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna take my take the paper, take the tape off here so we can have a nice fresh white border and we'll take a look at that. Sometimes you get to the point where anything else you do to a picture is just gonna kind of muddy it up. And I think I've kind of hit that point. So when I remove my tape, I pull it off at an angle and it seems to keep it from tearing the paper. Because this is just regular masking tape from the dollar store, it's not even you know painter's tape. But there is our finished card. So you requested uh, those those flowers. And something else I wanted to try, because I had this, and I thought this would be really cool for a card base. And then so I grabbed some, I grabbed some stamps, and I don't, I was just trying to decide what I wanted to use. I got the stamp scape, which is pretty. I've got this one, 99 cent one that I've never used. And I've got these trees, and I was just, I wish I could just do a vote, and you guys could say, you could yell out which one you wanted, and then I could stamp that. I think that'd be so fun. But unfortunately, I don't have that technology, so. I'm thinking maybe one of those two. I'm just worried about this one because it's such a detailed stamp. And maybe I'll do this one just because that's. I'm worried that this one might be too detailed. To uh, you know what? I'm gonna take the. I'm gonna take a chance. I'm gonna do it. Take a chance. I'm a risk taker. Got my archival ink. So I will share a little tip with you when you are stamping something really detailed like these stamp scapes. Okay, you gotta ink it up. And my my ink pad's pretty freshly inked. I did re-ink it last week. Okay, so you tip it, you make sure it's nice and shiny. You really want to make sure it's inked up because you get one chance with this. Okay. Okay, it's nice and shiny. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put this down 
like that and rub on the back and I apologize if I'm shaking the camera because it kind of there's kind of no way to avoid it down upstairs where I'm filming because I have the tripod is actually on my table and not mounted for my ceiling like it is down in my studio you just got to make sure that you don't let your paper move this is kind of like how you would pull a print if you're block printing all right now oh I really like that what do you think can you see let me zoom in because I can't lift up the if I lift up the camera I lift up the picture then um then I'll be out of my prime light source isn't that gonna be pretty I think oh yeah don't you think like a trim down and on a card a great card for a guy too so fun all right hope you enjoyed this that's the core paints by golden um uh, I'll put all the information in the video description if you want to investigate it further and um, shop around and maybe get some for yourself hope you liked it please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial and as always happy crafting